Hi guys, good to see you. How are you guys doing? How is everyone's evening going? I can't figure out light for this channel for the life of me. <laughs> and it seems like the light on TikTok is much better than the light on YouTube, no matter what I do. <laughs> and it's really strange because, hi John, because I have a much I have much better equipment on YouTube, so it's yeah, it's just very weird. But I will work on it most likely tomorrow when John can show me exactly what it is that one needs to do for this to be a different situation. Because <laughs> I trust him way more with cameras than I trust myself. Hi, Armin. Hi, uh, Theo. Hi, Juju. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Sky. Hi, Kat. Hi, Adele. Hi, guys. Hi, Grumpy. Hi, Gap. Hi, Kayla. Hi, Todd. Hi, IP. Hi, Pat Poems. Hi, Gorilla Joe. Hi, Christina. Hi, everyone. Good to see you guys. Hi, Kimmy. Um, hi, Squirrel. Good to see you. But yeah, so I don't know what it is, but for some reason, the picture is much more clear on TikTok and way less clear on YouTube. Hi, Jillian. Hi, Radio. Um, hi, Kari. Hi, everyone on TikTok as well. So yeah, so I'm going to work on this because clearly I'm doing something right here and I'm doing something wrong here. <laughs> but to be fair, I'm much better at figuring out light. Um uh, to figuring out light for iPhone than I am for the camera. Well, Armin says, unfortunately, it probably boils down to eventually buying expensive lighting equipment. I have really good lighting equipment. I just don't necessarily know how to use it with a with a mirrorless camera uh, because I think there are settings that I haven't even tapped into yet. And, you know, up until I turned on TikTok, I was like, oh, I actually got this to look pretty good. And then I'm like, mm, in, compar in comparison, actually, wow, that's horrible. <laughs> but so anyways, <laughs> I am, you know, I am going to figure this out um, as we go. Uh, and um, well, not today, obviously, but hi, Joe, and I'm go hi, Kareen. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to figure this out. Uh, hi, Alexander, and hi, Netlin. Uh, but yeah, we'll figure it out. So today is an interesting day. Ukraine has set forth uh, demands for peace or rather conditions for peace negotiations with Russia. And I think it's very interesting. And I think it's um, it's um, very um, fascinating because at this point, Ukraine is not trying to even, you know, we're we're basically being a lot more bold in what we present. Uh, today, Ukraine said that we are willing to guarantee security for Russia because, you know, Russia thinks if we're in NATO, we're going to somehow attack their territory. And uh, one of the reasons I genuinely think that our authority said that is because they're waiting for Russia to say, oh, but we don't agree we don't think a piece of paper means anything. And I think this is the hypocrisy that Ukraine wants to call out, um, that Ukraine wants to call out because Russia keeps, you know, Russia signed the, uh, the non-aggression treaty, the Budapest memorandum and promised to not attack Ukraine and keep its territorial integrity. Yet that piece of paper meant nothing because normally piece of paper, pieces of paper with Russia mean nothing. So, um, so basically, I think that this is exactly what Ukraine is doing. And we did say uh, that Russia voluntarily surrendering nuclear weapons, Russians leaving Ukrainian territory, all war criminals being punished. And um, there was a fourth condition. And I don't know. One second. I'm blanking on it because, you know, too much stuff in my head today. But I will tell you, so basically the four conditions are Russia leaves the territory of Ukraine, pays reparations, punishes all war criminals, and voluntarily surrenders nuclear weapons. After that, we are ready to sit down at the negotiating table and talk about security guarantees for Russia. 
So uh, I think that it's great that we're being bald in the demands that we want because these demands are not that bald. They're the bare minimum. And um, and uh, the other day, a, a German Munich Security Council um, had basically, or the Munich Security Conference had said that if Ukraine is able to return Crimea militarily, then Ukraine should go ahead and return Crimea mil militarily because it's a territory of Ukraine after all. And you know, the West has no business in telling Ukraine exactly what it is that we should be doing in order to achieve um, our territories back. So that, you know, in the beginning of these negotiations, in the big negotiations talk, uh, and um, the, in the beginning of, you know, the full-scale invasion, there were so many people saying that, we need to think about Russia this, we need to think about Russia that, no way should Ukraine come into Crimea militarily, you know, basically concessions this, concessions that, think about Russia, think about this, think about that. And we were saying from the very beginning that, you know, you're telling the wrong people how to behave and what we should be doing about our territory. You should be telling Russia what Russia should be doing and how Russia should be leaving and uh, what they should be considering when dealing with Ukraine, not vice versa. And it's really comforting to see that the world has finally let, let go of this rhetoric of telling Ukrainians what we should be doing when it comes to restoring our sovereignty and territorial integrity. And it's very comforting to see that Ukraine is not just saying, hey, we're not going to negotiate with you, but hey, here is our conditions. We are winning. You are on our territory. We are destroying your military that came to invade us and you have no say. So, um, yeah, I think it's amazing that we have... Um, I think it's amazing that we have uh, come to this point. And unfortunately, it's really sad that it took the world nine months to finally side with us on our decisions about our country, but better late than never. So there is that. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Diane. Very good to see you. Um, hi, Lauren. And uh, yeah, also, hi, Spicer over. And I said, bold, not bald. <laughs> uh, Ukraine as a country can only be bald if, uh, you know, if we lose all our wheat, I guess, then we're going to be bald. <laughs> but we're bold today. <laughs> hi, Cass. And to someone who is asking, which nationality are you? I am Ukrainian. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> I'm born and raised, you know. <laughs> For some reason, anytime I say born and raised, I want to say by those who praised <laughs> like the lyrics from the song. But, you know, huh, thank you for the beaver, Netlin. So for those of you who are new, hi, my name is Yulia. I was born and raised in Lviv, Ukraine and lived there until the age 16. 12 years ago, I moved to New York City and have been living here since. My entire family lives in Ukraine. That includes my father, my mother, my grandparents, everybody that I speak to on a daily basis. And um, in April-ish, I basically abandoned my full-time job and started doing this as a full-time job uh, because I want to bring awareness to Ukraine. I have only recently gotten my social media monetized, so let's hope that I can also stop abusing my savings <laughs> and YouTube will help me a little bit in, um, in doing that. This stream is uh, currently airing on four different platforms. It is TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter for now. And I keep having to make this uh, disclaimer because I don't know how long I can tolerate Twitter. There are so many Russian bots now there, and a lot of them are pretending to be Ukrainian, very successfully somehow too. And um, also there is just so much racism, so much homophobia, and so much uh, of terrible things going on ever since the Elon takeover. So I don't know how long I'm willing to be there, but for now, I'm there for as long as um, I can be useful in spreading information. Uh, with that said, we do Ukraine newscasts on this channel daily, and we do them for an hour to two hours, depending on how much information has come out that day. We dissect them in terms of geopolitics, history, and cultural context, and I answer questions. You are welcome to participate in Super Chats as they're incredibly, incredibly helpful and go a very, very long way, and that also guarantees that your question is going to be answered. Not that I'm not going to be answering um not that I'm not going to be answering your questions otherwise, but if the chat flows very fast, a good way of ensuring that I do answer your question is doing a super chat plus. It is super, super, super appreciated. And uh, yesterday, 
um, YouTube came out for me. Well, they didn't come out with this yesterday, but for me, <laughs> YouTube yesterday let me set up channel memberships. So um, if you would like to join my channel, you're also welcome to do that. And I will be incredibly grateful. Other than that, you you don't have to and you, uh, you know, you're not expected to do so, nor are you expected to support me in any sort of way. <laughs> it is my full time job and I am an independent journalist now. But, you know, it's my decision. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Mariana. That's a new one. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So with that said, um, how are you guys doing today? Do you have any pre-news questions? Are there is there anything you guys want to ask um, before we deep dive into the news? Please feel free to do so and we will discuss and then we will jump into our daily discussion of everything that happened in the past 24 hours in and pertaining to Ukraine. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like <laughs> I'm <laughs> I don't know why I'm adapting a radio voice, but <laughs> you know, um and hi, Benji. Good to see you. I'm very glad that you found me on uh, YouTube as well. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for coming into the live stream. Also, uh, hi, everybody. Have you seen the video about the activated carbon making? Oh my gosh, no, I still haven't. I'm so sorry. So I, I know that I'm like so bad at checking my DMs, but in my defense, my dog is in heat and yesterday she had done a lot of damage all around my apartment and today I spent most of the day basically cleaning it, cleaning it up and I, hi Pete, <laughs> from Washington and I also still need to do laundry after this broadcast. So it has been quite busy in this, um, in this household. Oh, thank you so much, Netlin. The feathers are so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and you know what I John taught me how to say how is it going in uh, like Portuguese slang and I remembered it for a day and now I forgot again <laughs> I will be doing better on that speaking of John you know what's really funny so uh, since John has been uh, the editor to this channel which he's officially the editor and all of the upcoming videos should be edited by him which will make your viewing experience much better and oh I forgot to mention on Wednesdays and Sundays we now will have um, 20 minutes or less news news summaries instead of lives. So instead of having a one to two hour lives, you will get all the news condensed in a 20 minute video. The videos are going to be fluid for now. Basically like anytime you watch a video, I welcome all the criticism, all the suggestions and everything you want or don't want to see in these videos. Anything that you like or don't like, I finally fixed the ring light. So it's not reflecting in my glasses unless I put my head like this, which I don't see the reason to do so. <laughs> so. Uh, I finally realized that my that my light actually goes further up <laughs> than I thought. And so we will be doing that and we will be uh, basically adjusting these videos to what you guys find useful and not useful. And that's what's going to be hop happening on Wednesdays and Sundays. And we are calling them uh, Ukraine News Briefs because they will be bringing you everything that happened in the past 24 hours dissected in under 20 minutes plus of the week. But so, as I was saying, John took over the editing for my channel, and I find it incredibly hilarious because I think he has now also decided to become a producer for this channel. And I will read you some of the funniest uh, conversations that I've had with him so far. And I will say they're the funniest conversations I probably had with him in my life because I've never had conversations like this. <laughs> and I find it so funny. Hi, hi, Suzanne. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And so uh, here is what I woke up to the other day. Absolutely, uh, absolutely unprompted. I do appreciate it, but absolutely unprom un unprompted. Here is a text message I received from John the other morning. The beginning of this video needs to be much shorter. Do you mean my most recent YouTube video? Yeah. Also, next time, the ring light, Yulia. Jesus, that's bothering me so much. I know, I know, the ring light reflection is bad. Very, very bad. Also, try to be more dynamic in your movement on camera. Just for like the intro, I'll explain what I mean when I see you. You can send me videos as examples too. Sends me a video. We're gonna try this, some zooms thrown into the edits to make the footage more dynamic. <laughs> and I find it so, so funny because it's like, 
<laughs> just like, I fully agree with him. Like, he has a good point. He also watches more YouTube than I ever have. And so he understands sort of how to make, like, <laughs> how to make the viewing experience more pleasant and more seamless, right? So I fully trust him on everything he's saying. I just find it so funny because it's like, you know, I've never had like work mode conversations with him really, apart from like a couple of projects we did that he helped me out with uh, when I was working as a graphic designer and he was helping me with some photography, but it was like way less, you know, intense than this. And it's just really funny because I, I find it super helpful i really enjoyed this i really welcome this all the feedback oh my gosh but it's so funny because he's a videographer and he's a video editor so he's like hey you need to move more seamlessly on camera <laughs> you need to have more dynamic movements we need to have more dynamic movement in camera <laughs> Your light, your light is awful. And I'm just like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> I'm clearly very not professional at this. And I started figuring out how to even do these things. <laughs> how to even do these things. Spicer over says, I sense he might, uh, he may overproduce and the charm will be lost. No, it's not going to be overproduced. But to be honest, like, the thing is that most people are used to a certain quality of videos on YouTube. And when you see videos uh, filmed by most, uh, you know, um, you know, news commentary channels, they're usually pretty edited. It's just that there is editing that's distracting and then there is editing that's very good and seamless. And so I trust that his editing will be like there is a lot of editing to do, but I think that it's going to be very good and seamless, uh, especially judging by, you know, every everything that I know of him and his work. And um and basically, I am very, you know, I am very excited to have him on board because, like, sometimes, you know, I will leave in words that could be easily cut, like, now that we've covered that, or, like, let's move on to the next thing. And it's, like, you don't necessarily need to do that. You can just take it out. And there's just so many, like, little tricks and little things that you don't think about that he thinks about that just make this video much more dynamic <laughs> and, and flow faster and easier and transitions are better and you know like sort of making it a certain point like what he meant with zoom ins is like something I wish sometimes I wish uh that I you know like I was saying something and it zoomed in on my face because it's for the effect of like you know, like, I wish if I'm saying something completely ridiculous about something that happened and I do this there was just like a camera zooming in my face, but you know, I can't do any of these things anyway. So this is a lot about editing and production value, uh, which, um, you know, I know nothing about really. I just, um, I just hope that it, it's going to be, uh, I just hope that it's going to be, uh, much more pleasant for you guys to, um, uh, much more pleasant for you guys to, you know, get through. Also, Crazy Cat, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's very, very sweet of you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are fantastic. You know that, right? <laughs> um, thank you, Suzanne. Oh my gosh, little, little red thing. <laughs> um, any of these like vague looking creatures always remind me of Cine. Um, What are these? So somebody on on um twitch who just joined um an ai what's ai i'm not really wanting anything i just the thing is that i no no no. i i think that you just joined i was saying that my husband is is now going to be the video editor for my channel so taking up a bigger role and helping me in this because he's back from the from his tour and he is also well like you know interested in helping me so and he is a videographer so he's going to be bringing in like a lot more a lot more kind of like easy to digest editing to the videos because I don't know what I'm doing uh, when I'm editing. But um, Pravit Vyacheslav, good to see you too. And so for someone who's asking what are these specific conditions, we discussed them earlier, but I know you just joined, so I'm going to read out the conditions for you out loud. And it is the head of the Sluhana Rodo and the former uh, base and the former like head of the negotiations with Russia 
for peace talks with Russia, David Arachmia uh, put forward the conditions for possible negotiations on security guarantees for Russia to achieve peace. And those conditions are Russia leaves the territory of Ukraine, pays reparations, punishes all war criminals, voluntarily surrenders nuclear weapons. After that, we are ready to sit down at the negotiating table and talk about security guarantees. And to be honest, those are the bare minimum uh, demands and um, those are the bare minimum demands. And uh, yeah, we know that Russia is not going to do it. That's the whole point is that Russia doesn't want to negotiate, but these are literally the floor of demands and they should not be considered uh, out there or outrageous or anything like that because we just basically want them to leave our territory. Uh, so... Oh, Jason says AI, artificial intelligence, it could monitor the video for actions such as the cues for auto zoom. I see. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess that would be helpful. But also, again, I'm so excited to actually rely on John to do these edits because I personally do really like the way that he edits videos. And he's also very good at sort of like, you know, listening to what I want. I also really like his style of editing. He also doesn't just like edit things and then presents me with them. It's sort of like teamwork. And he's very good at sort of telling me why and how and um, why and how and stuff like that and teaching me and stuff like that. And um, and yeah, so I'm very excited for him to be on board on this channel. And I'm very excited for him to take like a larger role in it. And uh, if you want to see sort of some of his work, uh, I will um, I will show it to you next stream, sort of his like personal work pre here. But also I'm thinking, well, we did a couple of like little videos with him just sort of, you know, just because I needed someone to hold the camera and do something better than I could do. But the intro to my videos is filmed by John. So if you guys missed it, I will show you what I mean. So. I'm going to play the intro that I now put in the in my channel videos. And there is going to be a couple of things that we're going to tweak and then we're going to deep dive and then we're going to dive into the news right away. How does that sound? And also Kareen, thank you so much. I just saw it. Mm, thank you, Michael. And um, um and thank you, thank you, Kareen. That's so sweet of you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Hi, Sandra. Um, okay, so let me show you what I mean by the video. Let me see. One second. Let me think. Uh -huh. It's on my drive. Yep. Google Drive. Hello. Um, was it on my drive? Well, actually, I'm just going to show you my first video and that's just going to be it. Um, 500 of them in almost impossible task to rid of them. Oh my gosh. Uh, there is, there are so many Russian bots on Twitter right now. To be honest, today I had to deal with so many of them and I was like losing my mind. I honestly thought that I won't be able to handle this. And I just genuinely considered for a while to literally delete my account because I, oh my gosh, I was, um, sort of roped into a conversation that I started with someone that I didn't like that I didn't tag in there, but someone else did. And then this conversation became kind of like very volatile in a way for no reason, because there was a lot of like misunderstanding and stuff. And there was this person who joined in on this conversation saying they're Ukrainian, which they clearly are not, or if they are, then maybe like generationally and they're very much missing cultural sentiment. And they just like started attacking me and telling everybody who would listen that they're Ukrainian and that their opinion differs. Meanwhile, there's like a million Ukrainians agreeing with this cultural sentiment that I'm putting forth because it is, what we've been saying from the very anyways there is just so many bots and these bots are really harmful and they pretend to be ukrainian which is even more harmful and i don't know what to do with them um also also one second guys i'm getting like someone is someone is ringing my doorbell which is strange because i'm not expecting anybody so give me one second i'll be back i just need to see who it is
I apologize for that. It was the wrong apartment. Very often happens. Uh, there are lots of like parties recently in my building and uh, people just um, always um, knock on the wrong door. Okay, so I'm going to show you the intro. The intro was filmed by John. So don't pay attention to the first whatever, but here you go. So yeah, basically it was his idea kind of to do it this way and I really like it. Um, oh my gosh, extended, my car's extended warranty. Yes, someone who's been trying to reach me about my car's extended warranty. I love that. But yeah, basically this is the, this is the intro and this was John's idea. The idea was um, kind of like, you know, he wanted my intro to be what I actually do every day. And he's like, you wake up and you're in your phone reading the news and then you make your coffee and you're in your iPad continuing to read the news. So he was like, and you do this until you do your lives. So I think that, a so it was like basically his whole idea to do the intro that portrays exactly what my day is like in like a very short sequence. Ah. <sighs> Oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, I am going to in ignore the person on Twitch who's saying that Ukraine joining NATO is poking the bear because that is the most common Russian rhetoric and I am tired of it. And I'm not even going to bring it up anymore on streams or, ex or expand on it or answer it or explain it because I'm just so freaking tired. And it's honestly been nine months and there's been so many explanations. Google is your friend. YouTube is your friend. You can literally go look at, um, uh, you can literally go look at my older videos and you will see why this is such a ignorant, silly statement. And I'm not going to bother saying it again, because again, it's been nine months and you can, um, you can figure it out. No, I did not say you're Russian. I said that it's a Russian rhetoric and I'm tired of it. And you're just parroting a Russian rhetoric. So anyways, uh, I'm done with that. Uh, I likely will do, but there is, has to be a legal challenge. Um, yeah, okay. Poking wood bear, you know, poking the Putin bear. What is your native language? Ukrainian. Ukrainian is my native language. But technically so is English. Like I have a couple, I have a couple of native languages. Okay, so anything you guys want to say before before we dive into the news, I do want to say that my dad called me today and he was like, so what are you hearing in the US about, you know, Russia and stuff? He basically always asks me because he, he wants to know if what they're hearing in Ukraine is the same as we're hearing in the West. And basically they've been hearing that Russia is running out of kamikazes and shaheds. And so they've been using kind of like, um, they've been using... They've been taking nuclear warheads off of their nuclear rockets in order, um, in order to, um, in order to, basically just gain more missiles, and yeah, it's the same that we're hearing here. But in Ukraine, they've also apparently located a missile that was meant to be a nuclear missile, but the nuclear warhead was taken off of it. Um. Okay, what so which beach <laughs> is asking me on uh, TikTok what my opinion as to Kanye West is? I am going to address this really quick. I'm going to say that Kanye West is a racist, anti-Semitic um, person, person who on air said that he supports Hitler and Russia and that he loves. And I mean, I'm actually repeating his very tone of voice when I say this, 
so many things about Hitler, so many things. So I think that uh, any person in their sound mind would have about the same um, about the same opinion of Kanye West that you know I do, and uh, I don't even think I need to expend on it. But yeah, he's a right racist, homophobic, Nazi sympathizer, and anti-Semitic. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you a video of a Ukrainian helicopter flying very low over a road and the mastery of Ukrainian pilots in being able to accomplish that. So also the thing about Russia running low on shaheds and kamikazes is that Iran can't doesn't have the opportunity basically to produce more of them right now and supply Russia. So Russia would have to set up shop in Russia, but Russia doesn't have the ability to produce them because of the lack of parts and sanctions. So they're in kind of a pickle. Iran is asking Russia to help them suppress protests now because protests and the situation within Iran is also one of the reasons why they can't efficiently help Russia with shaheds and kamikazes. I also absolutely love ignorant people on social media saying things like uh, getting annoyed at Ukrainians being mad at the Islamic Republic of Iran for supporting terrorism by saying, so what, Ukraine is the only country that deserves help? And uh, honestly, like I very often get, uh, I very, uh, rather, I very rarely get uh, stupefied at people's ignorance and comments. But when people say things like, oh, so is Ukraine the only country that deserves being helped? What's wrong with Iran helping Russia? I don't even know what to respond to that because the level of brain fry there is just, is just sort of, it's like a darker intensity of brain fry than I can, than I know how to handle because Russia is invading a sovereign country and committing a genocide. Uh, there is a difference between helping defensive actions and offensive actions, but you know, some people still deny the Holocaust. So what can I say? Uh, inches that some skilled pilots, right? So crazy cat says they're flying seriously low. The wheels are inches off the ground. That some skilled pilots right there. Yeah. That's the thing. Our air force ha has, um, one of the, one of the military units that I think has gained, uh, the most sort of training this time around and has, uh, really, 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 really upped their, uh, skills and their expertise is Ukrainian air force because our air force was practically inexistent before this invasion. And it was very, it was very like condensed and we didn't have enough, you know, um, vehicles to practice on. And I think that what Ukrainian pilots were able to accomplish in nine months is truly astonishing. Um, okay. Hi, Kathleen. Good to see you. And hi, Bam. Also, yeah, you did add a profile picture. <laughs> Hello. Kanye. Um, okay. Benji says, Kanye like Musk just thinks they're so special. They're the cleverest people in the room world and can never be wrong. Egotistical, megalomaniacal people. Yeah, that's the thing where, you know, like, I think that Kanye just never had to bear responsibility for his actions. And I think that he thinks it makes him edgy to disagree with the, um, with like the popular perspective. But the thing is, it's not a popular or unpopular perspective to find positives in a genocide. It is just blatantly wrong. Like some things don't have two sides to the story. It's the same as, you know, Kanye strikes me as a person who would try and justify saying a woman because her clothes were, I don't know, too tight or something. 
So that's kind of like the same thing where, you know, like, oh, no, I mean, I have a lot of positive things to say about that essay, per about that person who related to the other person. I mean, a lot of positive things. It's like, you know, the way that they did it was genius, though. And there was a concept behind it. Like, what? No, it's disgusting. No matter which way you look at it, it's a crime. And in this case, one of the most major crimes against humanity. Um, yeah, so, oh my gosh, I'm still so confused with these, like, gifter level things on on um, on TikTok. I now quite literally see every time somebody comes into the live because it notifies me. It's almost like TikTok is like, look, <laughs> acknowledge this person because they might give you a gift. And I'm like, what? This is so weird and pressuring and strange. <laughs> Anyways, hello to everybody who is new. Uh, as I've said previously, hi, my name is Yulia. I was born and raised in Lviv, Ukraine, and I've been living in New York for the past 12 years. I moved here at age 16 for education, then life happened, and I am here still. Uh, my immediate family that I talk to every day, that includes my dad, my mom, both of my grandmas, and my grandpa, are in Ukraine and in Lviv, and I'm the only one here in the United States. And also my aunt, but my aunt is right now in Wales. And uh, this stream is being cast. Hi, Scooter. This stream is being cast on four different platforms at the same time at the moment. One of them being TikTok, one of them being Twitter, one of them being Twitch, and one of them being YouTube. And my handle is the same across the board. So if you prefer one platform to the other, thank you, Ryan. Um, thank you so much. So if you prefer one platform to the other, you're welcome to switch. It's easy. You just look up the same handle as whichever social media, social media platform you're on right now. And I highly do encourage you to follow me on YouTube and find my YouTube because, well, this is a platform that I personally prefer and I'm going to be bringing in a lot more... Um, uh, I'm going to be bringing in a lot more uh, segments and a lot more interesting... And news that are convenient and short format for you guys to see on YouTube. And also to someone who says Wales, whereabouts, I uh, I am from Lviv, Ukraine, so Western Ukraine. Also, hi, Sasha, good to see you. And yeah, okay, without further ado, Luxembourg spent 16% of the defense budget to help Ukraine. Ministry of Defense of Luxembourg said, Today marks the 30th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Ukraine and Luxembourg. This year, Luxembourg has made an unprecedented step by supporting Ukraine with military equipment worth 75 million euros. Also, this is the comparison. A lot of people always say that the United States is spending too much money on Ukraine or so much money on Ukraine or the United States is giving us the money that... Um... Oh, hi. Hi, Tatiana. <laughs> Good to see you. But so that the United States is just giving us too much money and too many, too much tax dollars. So here's the thing. The United States so far has granted us 5.2% of the yearly foreign defense budget. Not that we're complaining as in like we are happy and we would be happy with anything. We're incredibly grateful. But what I'm trying to say is that your taxes would still go into that defense budget and it would still go somewhere else. It would still go to somewhere. It just would, it would still be taken out of your taxes. And the United States is only giving us 5.2 or 5.3 percent of the yearly foreign defense budget to begin with. So it's not these astronomical amounts or not these astronomically um, insane kind of like levels of support as people like to portray it to be. It's actually one of the margin proportionally to the defense budget. The United States is giving some of, is giving um, some of the least percentage of the available budget and most of the weapons that we have been given so far were going to be scrapped anyway. So there is that. I just want people to have that perspective. And thank you, Suzanne. That's so sweet of you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, famous little Patron always there for his people. The dark times turn the light on you. Here is Patron. And I know that we all really love him. So it's good to kind of show, showcase him sometimes. You know, you guys know that I love mood lifting and palate cleansing photos as much as the next person. And I will always insert them everywhere that it's possible, especially since we haven't heard from Patron in a while. Hi, Rue. Good to see you. I'm okay. How are you? And the next thing I'm going to show you is a very quote, a very uh, short quote from Solovyov. 
I am going to put it full screen, even though it's um, about a 12 second video, but I think it's incredibly important to see because at this point, you know, Russian propagandists are not even, um, they're not even using anything. They're just basically um, straight up just saying that they are disgusting for no reason because they just want to hate on us. And I think it's important for the world to see because why wouldn't it be? Okay. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, present video file. Here we go. Buckle up. Смотрите, насколько некрасивые лица. От резников они же все выглядят как мелкие бесы. Ведь удивительно некрасивые лица. Yes, as uh, says the most beautiful you know, representative of the male species on the planet. So, uh, you know, now that uh, we are not, that the Nazi rhetoric didn't stick, now it, we have to be attacked for quite literally, uh, quite literally, we have to be attacked for quite literally being uh, subjectively ugly to Solovyov. Uh, it's, I mean, hey, you know, uh, that's very important. You know, it's very important what people look like when you're talking about warfare and justifying reasons to attack somebody. It's like, hey, so um, just FYI, you know, among other things we don't like about Ukrainians, they're also ugly. We can't find any more justifications for saying that we invaded them because the Nazi rhetoric didn't stick. The nuclear pigeons shocker didn't stick either the teenage mutant ninja soldiers did not stick either another shocker shocked i tell you uh, you know the bio labs didn't stick to anybody but like trumplicans <laughs> thank you susan nothing stuck so it's like hey you know what we are invading ukraine and we are trying to de-uglify it because you know what their defense minister is literally just ugly yeah, I mean, hey, honestly, at least Solovyov is, at least Solovyov is like being real for once. You know, he's not trying to, he's not trying to make up some inexistent reason for invading Ukraine. He's literally just like, you know what? I don't like them. We're invading them because I don't like them. Look at Reznikov. I don't like his face. He's the defense minister of Ukraine. I don't like his face where we defended, we, we uh, you know, invaded Ukraine. And to be honest, I much more agree with these sentiments coming from them than I do with all of the like nuclear BS because at least this shows their real opinion. <laughs> and this is not, you know, trying to perpetuate some inexistent sentiment. <laughs> this is just Russians being Russians. They're like, to be honest, we have no reasons to invade them, but we think they're ugly. <laughs> so that should do. Kareen says he doesn't have mirrors in his house. They all broke when he looked at them. Yeah, I think, well, like looking at, I think that, you know, there is this um, superstition that if somebody has an ugly soul, the mirrors break in front of them, right? And I feel like if Solovyov were to be in one of those like fully mirrored rooms, I feel like all of the mirrors would just like break and start attacking each other because his soul is just so ugly. Like it's not his appearance, it's 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 his soul. But it's also funny to me that he, out of all people, would be talking about someone being like ugly. Also, uh, Dimaka2501199, hello, uh, lovely Russian bot. It's not Baden, it's Biden, and it's from Capital and also, I'm just kind of like, I'm confused. So when they are hiring you to be an English speaking troll, do they not give you the basics of not naming yourself Russian names? Do they not give you the basics of how to freaking spell basic words in English? I'm just like, please, like asking for a friend. I really want to know because I keep seeing all of these trolls that come in and I feel like they just simply forgot which account they come in from. And they just start, you know, pretending to be an English speaker with a freaking handle as Dima. Dima. Who is paying you for this half-assed job? And why are they paying you? Please let me know which one of the troll farms you're associated with. I would like to write a formal complaint. Normally, it takes me much longer 
to convince a Russian troll that I know is a Russian troll to reveal itself as a Russian troll. You are no fun, Dima. Frankly, you make my working days very uh, uninteresting. You make it too easy. Where could I write a complaint about your troll skills? They are lacking. <laughs> Dima, honey, where are you? Baby, Dima. Dima, I'm waiting and I don't like to be made to wait. Okay, fine, I'm over Dima. <laughs> I don't chase men that don't want to talk to me. Anyways, okay. Um, there is a video of Ukrainian troops engaged in a firefight with Russian forces in a wooden area near Kremina, Luhansk region, but I don't know... It's a four minute video and I don't know exactly how graphic it is. So let me check it out because I don't know if I'm allowed. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a very, this is a very, 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 I'll show it to you at the end of the screen, the stream, stream. <laughs> no response from Dima anymore. anymore. Dima was a, Dima was um sent to see some Russian ballet elsewhere. Ukrainian soldiers on the move in Eastern Ukraine are listening to music and their mood is very lifted. Take a look. <laughs> oh, obrigada. Kiligao. <laughs> obrigada, Angela, kiligao. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I'm gonna I'm gonna start learning more words than just these. The G7 and Australia following the EU introduced a cap on the price of oil supplied by sea from Russia at $60 per barrel. Occupiers unalived 443 children in Ukraine, more than 850 were wounded. As of the morning of December 3rd, 2022, more than 1,295 children have suffered in Ukraine as a result of the armed aggression of the Russian Federation. According to official information from juvenile prosecutors, 443 children were unalived and more than 852 were injured. So this is the video from Bakhmut, and I showed it to you today, but I'm going to, I showed it to you yesterday, but I'm also going to show it to you today. If you remember what Mariupol looked like, um, this is not going to shock you, but this is going to show you what Russia has turned in, and they turned into the next Mariupol. And I can't even imagine the amount of horror that we're going to find once uh, our army is able to push Russians further out of the city and start and start um, exploring everything that had happened there. So here we go. This is Bakhmut, one of the highest points. So this is what some of Bakhmut looks like today. It's a city that's a complete ruin. And it's really sad. Also, you know, I want to address um, something for Ukrainians. So I used to say Bakhmut. 
And then I was corrected 50 million times that it's Bakhmut. And so now I say Bakhmut. Now I keep getting corrected that it's Bakhmut. <laughs> so you know what? I'd like to have a poll for Ukrainians. Oh, hi, 300 Live. Thank you so much for becoming a member <laughs> of my YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> good to see you. But basically, yeah, so I would like to have a poll among Ukrainians. Do you say Bakhmut or Bakhmut? Because I want to settle it once and for all, and I'm going to just go with whatever ma the majority says, or if there is someone from Bakhmut or Bakhmut, please let me know how you call your city, because <laughs> I feel like I'm failing my entire country <laughs> by not being able to figure it out. <laughs> uh and hi, thank you so much. Good to see you, 300 Life. I'm going to add the ye emoji today. So I found out basically for the, yesterday I had three members on my YouTube channel. Yesterday was the first day that I was able to have memberships or like the joins to my YouTube channel. And I really appreciate you guys signing up. Um, it's $9.99 per month and I only have one level because I couldn't figure it out. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for the super sticker. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out yet sort of like what I can add and take away. I'll probably do more, more levels um, probably tonight if I have time to deep dive into them. So there will be like a lower level and like, and higher levels, I guess. But basically there is one level right now, it's $9.99 a month. And, um, and, um, and, and, and uh, there are cine emojis. And basically I had three subscribers yesterday. Now I think I have five, six, six, yes. And so now I, I, I can add two more emojis, which is cool because the next one is going to be ye. And please let me know uh, which, so the way we're gonna do it on YouTube is um, I want to have YouTube specific, uh, YouTube specific like emojis. So I'm probably going to dig up more pictures of cine and I'm going to change the three that I have right now to YouTube exclusive ones. And also, um, and also, I would like you to tell me which, um, uh, which, um, uh, <laughs> uh, I would like you to tell me which emojis you would like me to add on YouTube, uh, in addition to the ones that we already have. So I'm thinking ye is the next one, and then the, the next slot is empty. So you guys let me know. I would like to tailor them to what you want to be able to express with emojis. And Benji says, I'm a Brit. We say tomato, but in the US, you pronounce it as tomato. <laughs> it's uh, my friend Joe uh, was actually, he's, he's a Brit too. And he was a coach for a um, kids like soccer team football team and he was saying that uh he found the the funniest thing that happened to him was like kids constantly running up to him and being like coach can i have some water can i have some water <laughs> and i find it really funny but uh i will tell you that i used to live in broadstairs um it's a small town in kent in uh Thunet county in england uh and it's like near and over it's between a romsgate and margate and uh i used to have quite more of an english pronunciation than american one but we're not going to deep dive into it but so i found the funniest thing brought to be a very small town and really a lot of tourists or anything like that and most of the people who were there were you know english and thank you so much mojo Thank you so much. And so <laughs> Americans were not really like uh, a, a frequent guest in there. And there was a small little like local sandwich shop that was so funny. Uh, sorry, that was so good. And it was like kind of in the set. It was ne next to the clock tower. It was just like the first sang sandwich shop, shop you would go to. And it was also very good. And so I was standing in line in this sandwich shop one day. And so this guy is taking orders and there are so many people in line. And there is an American tourist that comes up and they're like telling him what they want in their sandwich. And they keep going tomato. And the guy's like, what? <laughs> and they're like, tomato. <laughs> I want a tomato. <laughs> and they keep repeating tomato. And this poor English dude just like doesn't hear it. And he's like, I don't understand you. I don't understand you. And I'm just like, tomato. <laughs> he wants a tomato. <laughs> And I like it was the funniest thing on the planet because like I it was like a very small town too and I think he was just like not used to the pronunciation and it was like loud and there were a lot of people and he was in a hurry and he like couldn't understand this guy and it was like the funniest thing because he was just like huh huh <laughs> it's like pardon pardon <laughs> this guy kept saying tomato and this poor English man just wouldn't understand him 
<laughs> so yeah, anyways, it was a very random story, but I thought it'd be very funny. And thank you so much again, Mojo. <laughs> Mm, so yeah, so that was my um, little broadster story. <laughs> and I just like to be, to be fair, I was like 13. Okay, I was a 13 year old. It was a break in between classes. I really wanted my sandwich. These people weren't moving fast enough. And I just kind of lost my sheets. <laughs> and I was like, tomato. <laughs> he wants a tomato. <laughs> just like, it was so funny too because I like yelled it out and the entire thing, the entirety of all of these like English people just turned around at me and this like one American person was like, yes, <laughs> I want a tomato. <laughs> and I, it was like, yeah, it was a... Uh... It was very funny, and the story is like lives in my head, uh, as Gen Z says, rent free forever. And anytime somebody says tomato, tomato, I just remember this dude trying to communicate that he wants tomatoes, <laughs> and this other dude just completely not understanding what tomatoes are or what he's saying. And it makes my day every time. So, you know, if you're having a bad day, uh, you know, think about Tomato Tomato Story from Broadstairs, England. It's, uh, I'm telling you, it's a good mood lifter. Okay, Ukrainians will never again be stones of some empires. We have already reconquered this and will ensure the full independence of our state. Photos by Konstantin Liborov and Vlada Liborova, Oleg Palchuk, Palchik, uh, Vitaly Yurasov, and the Air Tem team, Arsen Petrov, Slava Ratinsky, and Yelena Tita. So here are some fantastic photos. One of them is uh, actually on my thumbnail today, and I will show you these photos. So these are the photos from Frontlines. Or you could live in the South and say Mater. <laughs> Mater, oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, I um, actually, and I'm going to tell you a story, and I really hope that my friend doesn't, that this person that I'm going to talk about uh, doesn't um, doesn't have my YouTube or doesn't even know I have a YouTube or doesn't watch my TikTok lives, which, you know, to be honest, with the way the algorithm works, I feel like the second I'm going to start talking about it, it's going to just like, it's going to be... Um, <laughs> The algorithm is just going to bring my video to them. But speaking of the South and how Southern people speak. So my, like one of my first years in college, one of my first years in college, uh, I was in a design class and there was this guy, Luke, that ba that ended up becoming one of my like closest friends in, in college. And we were in a class together and I had seen him before in a photography in a film photography class, but he was in a different group than I was. So we would just like kind of cross paths in the dark room, but we were in the same class. But anyway, so I've seen him before and he's from Georgia and he's from a small town in Georgia. And so he has a very, he had a very, very, very thick Southern accent. And up until Luke, I really have never been exposed to Southern accents uh, in reality, only in movies. And so Luke, was very interested in developing a friendship with me, thank God, because he's awesome. And, you know, I was very happy to be friends with him. But uh, he would like sit next to me in class and he would consistently talk to me. And so it was a lab and, and a computer lab. So you could like you, you were free to speak to each other. You were free to like share advice. But the problem was that anytime he said something, I wouldn't understand him. And I would just keep keep asking him to repeat himself. And I felt so bad at some point that I was like, hey, I think it's so rude that we just keep talking in class. And I think our professor is getting really annoyed. Do you have Facebook? I think we should just chat through Facebook. And that was like my second day of knowing him. And so I added him on Facebook. And every time we wanted, there was like something to communicate about, I would just write to him. And then eventually I obviously started understanding him. But, but I remember just being like, oh my God, I don't know what you are saying. And at some point he asked me if I wanted to go to a honky tonk. And I was like, huh? Anyways, so uh, I granted to Luke for teaching me how to differentiate different Southern accents, and I am granting it to Luke for uh, teaching me how to listen to people and figure out what they're trying to say instead of just being like, ah, I don't know what it is. So, so yeah, that was my first like, and 
Luke has a not like I wouldn't say now. I don't think now that I think he has a super heavy southern accent, like Georgian accent. But at that point, it was probably the heaviest I've ever heard. So I was like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And Kareen, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. I really, really appreciate it. That is very, very sweet. Thank you so much. Also, I'm going to try and make Belgian waffles tomorrow. So Kareen is a fantastic baker. If you guys didn't know, Kareen on YouTube. Uh, Kareen is also on TikTok. But, <laughs> but Kareen on YouTube. And she is from Belgium. And she had sent me a recipe for Belgian waffles. And I know this is not about Ukraine. But I will tell you that uh, I am going to be becoming a waffle because I love Belgian waffles. And right now I buy them pre-made in Whole Foods, which obviously they're not Belgian. <laughs> they are arguably waffles. <laughs> but thank you so much, Suzanne. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and now I'm going to be trying to make real Belgian waffles and uh, I will probably be eating them so much that I will become a waffle myself. <laughs> so thank you, Corrine, for sending me the recipe. Okay, um, so this is a video of how our guys work on the front lines. I will, um, you try and understand the Scottish accent, especially if they're from Glasgow. So actually, I have quite a few friends from Scotland and, oh, thank <laughs> obrigada, <laughs> valeu. <laughs> um, actually, I have quite a few friends from Scotland and I have quite a few friends from Ireland and I have no problem understanding Australian, New Zealand. Um, like I've never had a problem understanding um, understanding any of the like New Zealand, South African, um, Australian, Welsh, Scottish, Irish, anything like that. No problem ever understanding any of the like the varieties of English accents. Even Cockney didn't phase me to be honest. But Southern, Southern can't do like couldn't do well now I can do now I think like now I don't see it. I mean like I'm used to it also but at first I was like oh my god but yeah Scottish is like okay as long as you're not throwing in like words that I don't know <laughs> the accent itself doesn't phase me <laughs> but um okay so this is how our guys work on the front lines and I will be showing that to you yes Okay, so this is going to be a little dark, but you will still see this is drone footage. So I'm thinking, ooh, fireworks, right? Beautiful fireworks. Pretty fireworks. <laughs> the best kind of fireworks you can find in Ukraine. Two more PZH-2000 self-propelled artillery systems with ammunition have been repaired and delivered to Ukraine, Minister of Defense of Lithuania has noted. The withdrawal of Russian weapons from Zaporizhia and PP will be part of the agreement between Ukraine and Russia with the IAEA. IAEA head for La Republica. According to him, both sides have already agreed in principle not to shell the station and not to shell from its territory. Oh. Thank you, crazy American overseas. Oh my gosh, I love that. Thank you so much. Um. <laughs> on December 7th, U.S. senators will hold a secret briefing on assistance to Ukraine, as per CNN. Biden administration insists on allocating $37 billion in aid to Ukraine. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov informed about the plans of Russian President Vladimir Putin to visit the occupied territories of Ukraine later. I quote, Putin will visit Donbass later. <laughs> I think that this was probably asked, um, uh, I think that this was probably asked uh, by someone in it, like from the reporters, you know, and he probably had to answer. And so he was like, yes, yes, we have, this is an assumption, by the way, don't take it as a fact, but it's just funny because I think that since they're advertising Donbass being so important to Russia and Russians caring about Donbass so much, it really doesn't make any sense that they, that Putin still hasn't like gone out there and, and visited it himself, right? So I think it's funny that they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have plans of him visiting it later. Yeah, later at some point. Um, 
Send sunglasses. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Angela. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, there is a very interesting. Also, speaking of, you know, recently, you, recently there have been a lot more reports and a lot more videos, drone footage, not only of fireworks taking out the enemy army, but we honestly recently haven't had to work as hard because there is so much footage of Russian soldiers checking on their comrades literally in the trenches and those comrades are no longer with us not because the Ukrainian military took them out but because the cold did. Russian soldiers are quite literally freezing to death on the front lines in Ukraine. It's getting incredibly cold, especially in the east of Ukraine. And the climate is um, is pretty, is like pretty treacherous. And those soldiers are really under-equipped. And I don't mean under-equipped, like some Ukrainian soldiers are under-equipped and need help, right? Like they need more gloves or they need more, uh, or they need more like better, I don't know, better boots or something like that. No, these guys don't have winter uniforms. They're still wearing summer uniforms. They don't, a lot of them don't have underwear. A lot of them don't have socks. A lot of them are literally in sne in sne sneakers, like trainers, trainers, like Adidas, Adidas shoes. And it's just, you know, it's it's really not uncanny that this would be happening. Mikhail Podolyak urged Russians to forget about the seizure of Bakhmut and start preparing for the Yalta Tribunal. Mikhail Podolyak is the uh, spokesman for the uh, office of the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, and he is also quickly becoming one of my favorite public speakers because he says things that are so on point and so sharp and they are... He can annihilate somebody with words so masterfully and so elegantly, and so elegantly too. Bakhmut, under the city, which has no strategic meaning for the course of the war, the Kremlin is burying thousands of mobilized prisoners, mercenaries, and soldiers, all to prove to themselves, we can still do something. No, you can't. Forget about Bakhmut. Start preparing for Yalta, the Yalta Tribunal. The advisor of the head of the OP wrote on Twitter, so Yalta is a city in Crimea. And that's why he's saying specifically Yalta. And this comes after Germany had supported the idea of um, uh, the idea of Ukraine returning Crimea militarily if Ukraine is able to do so. Armin's quote of the day is up. For those of you who don't know, Armin on YouTube always sends a quote of the day every day, and I always read it. Treat your men as you would your own beloved sons, and they will follow you into the deepest valley. Lao Tzu, the art of war. Ukraine's leaders stand with their soldiers. Putin doesn't give a bleep. Yeah, well, you know, to us, they're our heroes and our defenders. To him, they're, they're cannon fodder. We have very different goals in this war. It's here's the thing. It's an invasion, right? <laughs> They're invading and he just wants to prove a point to the world and satisfy his ego. We have no points to prove like that. And we have no ego to satisfy. We have our country to preserve and our people to preserve. So, yeah, that's why this is so different. Russian Defense Minister Shoigu arrives in Belarus for, for talks with Belarusian Defense Minister. It is already reported that a protocol to the agreement on joint provisions of regional security in the military sphere was signed with the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation. The National Crime Agency of Great Britain detained Russian billionaire Mikhail Friedman on suspicion of money laundering. Later, he was released on bail. So this one's funny because many of you probably didn't hear this, but Mikhail Friedman has a son. And this son used to frequent all of the luxury hotels, luxury clubs, wear Rolexes, all these super expensive watches, like, you know, briquettes and hublots and stuff like that, and flaunt them. And he would fly in private jets and he was like, you know, driving fast cars and living a fast life. And so he's in Dubai right now. And he is very anti war. And he recorded this address to the world because he has been sanctioned and his assets have been frozen as much as his father's. 
And he was like, I don't understand why I am even implicated in this situation. I can't go back to Russia and see my friends. I am living in a foreign country. And as you can see, I'm living on a budget because he's like living in a pretty nice apartment, actually. And it's an apartment in Dubai. Like how cheap could that be, you know? And he's like going on and on and on about how unfair it is that he is being sanctioned as well. And, uh, and also with all that said, he's like wearing, you know, like a ragged t-shirt, like sort of like a sweat stained t-shirt, you know, and he's trying to appear so like down to earth while he sits in this like super nicely newly renovated apartment, you know, not like some, some like slum or anything like that. And it's funny that he chose specifically that attire, because when you go on his Instagram, you can see Hublots, briquettes, Ferraris, you know, um, Breitlings, and you can see him wearing suits and all of this stuff. And it's like obvious that he was really trying to play up this image of this poor guy who is so upset. And he's like, yeah, I have to live in whatever I have left, whatever means I have left and like, blah, 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 because clearly my assets and my dad's assets are frozen and like, blah, blah. And I don't understand. How is it me that I just have to, um, that I just have to basically uh, suffer from my dad's mistakes or something. And then I, I believe that in his videos video, he also said that he considers himself Ukrainian and I mean, not because he has any relation to Ukraine. No, no, no. It's it's because he understands the suffering. And I was like, this entire video is basically like, you remember there was that video of a billionaire's son talking about how difficult life of a billionaire's son is. And he was like trying to be relatable. And then he like blew up all over the internet because of being the most like out of touch of, with reality person on the planet. Uh, so that is the like vibe that I'm getting from this. <laughs> Ukrainian armed forces have already liberated 13 settlements in Luhansk region. In the Svatova Kremina direction, our defenders are gradually advancing, but the advance is difficult because everything around is mined. There is a huge amount of equipment from the Russian troops reported in the Luhansk Regional Military Administration. In St. Petersburg, the Irnovsky car market is on fire. So there have been lots of fires in in various different places in Russia recently. So this is one angle and this is another angle. And um, I don't know if these are just sort of, you know, um, I don't know if these are happening to kind of locations that are just random, lo random large public locations sort of to prove a point and to show that the war is not welcome, right? Or whether these facilities have been um, have been modified to be ammo depots and that's why they're on fire. I don't have that information, but judging by sort of like the locations that have been chosen, it could be 50-50. Um, you know, before this, it was an oil facility and a plastics warehouse, which I don't see why somebody would set a plastics warehouse on fire. I feel like that has definitely been modified to be an ammunition storage facility. So yeah, in Bukovina, a laptop with child pornography was found in the diocese of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Moscow Patriarchy. There was child, which according to preliminary data was not downloaded from the internet, but filmed on a video camera. So by a priest or by somebody who is affiliated with the church. And that comes up, it comes after, remember that 17 year old um, boy being found in bed with a Russian or patriarchy church uh, ch um, priest. And uh, a lot of people were saying that I'm conflating homopho uh, that I'm conflating um, LGBTQIA and pedophilia, which in Ukraine, age of consent is 16, the guy was 17. So technically it wasn't pedophilia, but obviously in my opinion, it was, but also the, the whole point of the video that I made on TikTok was say that Russian patriarchy uh, preaches the Russian world, which says that there are no gay people in Russia and it's basically like illegal to be gay. So that was the whole situation, not, uh, you know, not conflating the two terms. The Banksy graffiti dismantled in Hostomel is in the Bucha Police Department, said Andriy Nebutov, the head of the National Police of Kyiv Region. The graffiti will undergo an artistic examination and the suspects will face criminal liability. 
Ukrainian border guards shot down a Russian Su-34 on the outskirts of Bakhmut. The fate of the pilots is not yet known. Losses of the Russian occupiers in Ukraine as of today amount to 90,600 personnel. Russian Defense Minister Shoigu met with Lukashenko. During the meeting, Lukashenko actually admitted that the Belarusian military was involved in training Russian mobilized soldiers. Both our and your officers are preparing the guys. Both Belarusians and Russians are preparing. Lukashenko said, adding that the military are training as a single group, a single army. He called the purpose of the training the protection of the Union. Pressure on Putin over nuclear weapons forced him to change war tactics, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State stated. Russia has already made itself a pariah, but we have explained that the use of nuclear weapons will have an impeccable, incomparable response and consequences. Well, to be honest, I don't think that Russia was planning on using nuclear weapons to begin with. And I've explained this a million times saying that they don't even know what condition and like what maintenance level they are at. So I don't think that was a possibility ever, but who knows? I don't think it's the U.S.'s response or <laughs> anything that really changed the, it changed the course of the events here because the response really was not very sufficient and it wasn't very firm either. The EU has officially set the ceiling price for Russian oil at $60 per barrel. The decision appeared on the website of the European Council. It will come into force on December 5th and Zelensky has already called it weak. French President Emmanuel Macron believes that the West should think about how to meet Russia's need for security guarantees if President Vladimir, Zelensky, if Vladimir Putin agrees to negotiate an end to the war in Ukraine. This means that one of the important issues we must address, as President Putin has always said, is the fear that NATO is coming to its door and the deployment of weapons that could threaten Russia, Macron said. Um, he said this in an interview with the French TV channel TF1, recorded during his state visit to the United States this week, Reuters reports. Macron said that Europe must prepare its future security architecture. This is actually kind of funny because Ukraine really said that just to show that Russia is not going to agree to it, I think. And Ukraine kind of is saying this strategically because obviously Russia is not going to want to give up um, give up. Uh, their nuclear weapons and also they know that Russia is not going to want to leave the territory of Ukraine. So uh, we are saying this to show what Russia really is like, right? And Macron is further perpetuating the rhetoric that Russia somehow is under threat of NATO by saying that Europe needs to prepare these, um, that Europe needs to prepare these sort of like conditions and tactics and stuff. Really, I mean, sure, you could be discussing it behind the closed doors, but you really don't need to air that out to the world because that just sort of gives the wrong message because he quoted, as President Putin said before, that he's scared of NATO. It's like NATO has never had any sort of claims of attacking Russia or ideas or need to attack Russia. Okay, this next video is going to be incredibly pleasant, and it is a Ukrainian flag over the left bank of Dnipro River in Kherson. The special unit Carlson stated that the armed forces of Ukraine are opening a bridgehead for further deoccupation of the left bank. And this is fantastic news, and I will show you the flag. Macron, Jesus. Yes, Guy, well, Macron is always, you know, an interesting character. I think this was... Oh, one second. This might be... So yeah, this is the special military unit Carlson, and um, the Ukrainian flag is now hoistering over the left bank of Dnipro River, signifying that more, um, 
Kherson and more of Khersonians are going to return back home. Russia has exported at least one billion worth of grain from Ukraine. Bloomberg reports the invaders harvested about six million tons of wheat in the occupied territories. Currently, Russian troops occupy the territories where about a quarter of all Ukrainian wheat is grown. The Russians liked to use hunger as a tactic in the 20s, in the 30s, and in the 40s. And they like to use hunger as a tactic now. Iran asks Russia to help suppress protests in the country, according to Iran International. Tehran also relies on information uh, from Russia to assess the situation inside the country, as well as they ask them to send advisors for training. Yeah, basically how Russians suppress protests. But the thing is, like, Russian training isn't going to help them because Russians, uh, you know, they stand and film 10 police officers attacking an old lady. Meanwhile, in Iran, 10 people will attack, attack a police officer if they are going to try and attack someone. President Volodymyr Zelensky called it a weak position and a frivolous decision to set the ceiling price for Russian oil at $60 per barrel by the member, members of the European Union and the G7, because that is a very, very generous price. And um, that is all I have for today. Let me see if Kyiv Independent has anything more to add. Today was a pretty slow news day, to be honest except for the, for the conditions that Ukraine put forth for negotiations. Institute for the Study of War says Putin has little interest in ceasefire or negotiations. Russia would benefit from negotiations with Ukraine and Western countries that, that include a ceasefire, allowing it to prepare, prepare its military for further offensive against Ukraine. The Institute for the Study of War said in the latest update, of course, that's something that we've been saying the whole time, that a ceasefire is not an option at all. G7 and Australia agree on 60 per barrel price cap for Russian oil. Governor says Russian missiles hit Zaporizhia Oblast overnight. Ukrainian energy company on Russia's attacks on infrastructure. No system in the world has faced the same. Ukraine faces its most challenging winter as Russia relentlessly strikes its energy system to plunge the nation into cold and darkness. Since mid-October, Russia carried out five mass missile attacks that have damaged 40% of Ukraine's energy system and made long power outages a new reality for many Ukrainians. And every missile strike is yet another uphill battle for DTEK, the country's largest energy company, dominating Ukraine's coal production and electricity market. And these guys have been repairing our infrastructure and our energy grid under incredible, under rocket fire under rocket fire, under, you know, uh, an incredibly cold winter. They have been doing an incredible job. And there are some of our heroes, too. UK Defense Ministry says Russia made small adv advances near Bakhmut Donetsk Oblast. General Staff says Ukrainian troops repel attacks near six settlements, however. Uh, military says Russia deploys 24 caliber cruise missiles to Black Sea. Lithuania delivers two repair German howitzers to Ukraine. Governors say Russia attacked eight Ukrainian regions over the past day. And those include uh, Donetsk. Here, Russian forces launched attacks on eight Ukrainian regions in the country's east, south, and north, using artillery and missiles to strike residential area, Ukrainian officials said on December 3rd. Ukrainian authorities urge Kherson Oblast residents to east bank of uh, on east bank of Dnipro to evacuate. Anticipating possible intensification of hostilities in Russian occupied areas of Kherson Oblast, Governor Yaroslav Yanushevich uh, announced that the authorities would help residents trapped on the Russian occupied east bank of the Dnipro River evacuate during daylight hours from December 3rd to 5th. Kremlin signals Putin to visit occupied Donbass. Russian media said on December 3rd that Russian dictator Putin would pay a visit to Russian occupied Donbass without specifying when and where. Ukrainian intelligence says Russia is using more newly produced missiles as existing stockpiles run low. Russia is continuing to burn through its strategic missile stockpile and now firing more and more new missiles with some produced as late as August according to Vadim Skibitsky, a representative of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry's Intelligence Directorate. Russian oligarch Friedman was arrested in UK on suspicion of money laundering and released on bail. Romania starts supplying gas to Moldova, countering dependence on Russia. 
General Staff says air defense shoots down Russian aircraft. General Staff also says 270 Russian troops were wounded in Zaporizhia Oblast on December 2nd alone. Officials say Ukraine sentences collaborator to 15 years in prison. Zaporizhia City Council Secretary Anatoly Kurtyev said a Ukrainian court has sentenced a Russian proxy militant to 15 years in jail for conducting a reconnaissance mission to organize a Russian offensive on Zaporizhia, which I personally think is a very, very low sentence, but oh well. Reuters says Macron says West should consider security guarantees for Russia. U.S. officials say pressure on Putin over nukes forces him to change war tactics. Ukraine's chief negotiator says Russia must withdraw from Ukraine before starting talks. We covered that today. Zelensky says $60 an oil barrel price cap is comfortable for Russia's budget. And it is. It's only a matter of time before stronger tools will have to be used anyway. It is a pity that this time will be lost. Governor says Russian forces shall border uh, border of Sumo Oblast late on December 3rd. An Institute for the Study of War says Russian document indicates that mobilization continues despite government's statements. A Russian telegram channel dedicated to providing Russians legal support to avoid compulsory military service published a document on the Russian National Guard, which confirmed that mobilization continues despite Russian President Vladimir Putin's announcement of the formal end of partial mobilization on October 31st. The Institute for the Study of War reports. I mean, we knew that mobilization continues because, you know, Russian Russian military keeps surfacing and we keep, you know, uh, disabling them, to, so to speak. And that is all I have for you for today. Please let me know if you have any questions, suggestions, or anything like that, and I am happy to answer them. Um, and... Um, yeah. Twitch 1950. Interesting. <laughs> I always find it funny when a different platform's name is used in someone's handle on a platform that isn't that platform, which name is being used. Anyways, <laughs> so do you guys have any questions, suggestions, or anything like that? Hi, Bob. Thank you. Oh, what just happened? Oh my gosh. Yeah, and my camera decided to give up on me, so <laughs> there is that. I don't know why that happened, to be honest. Let's see. Nope. Uh-huh. I see. Maybe I forget to charge it enough. Okay. I understand they have been training pilots on F-16, so perhaps not that long. Yeah. Our pilots have been getting training on better and more advanced aircraft, so F-16s are those, and I think that they will probably start training our... Can we see the Sinipu? Sinipu is, like, under the bed. Like, literally under the bed. She's not having a great time recently. I will post some Sinny photos and videos on patreon because cine is being a little cranky you need a zelensky emoji so we can throw them in the chat to annoy the bots and trolls sounds good where people get the idea poland will take ukraine territory it's annoying yeah well it's because they want to stir up trouble between poles and ukrainians because they know that we're likely to get in an argument over who uh, over here's the thing Ukraine, Lviv was always a Ukrainian city and it was founded by Danilo Halitsky, who was a Kievan prince. But Polish had the control of the city for a long time and also built a lot of stuff in the city. So Polish people think that Lviv is essentially a Polish city, but now it's under Ukrainian, uh, now it's a Ukrainian city and they have no problem with it. But the problem in which we get into an argument is the fact that we say that Lviv was occupied by Poland, and Polish people say that basically they developed Lviv, so it's a Polish city originally. So that's why uh, these trolls like to bring up the argument of like, oh, Poland will take Ukrainian territory because they want us to argue and our support and our connection and our relationship to dwindle. That's a very common troll, ta troll, <laughs> troll tactic, but yeah. Uh, 
So yeah. Is hot chocolate nice in Ukraine? Yes, we have really good hot chocolate and we also have uh, glint, uh, glue wine and like glint wine basically. Glint wine, so that's like mulled wine. <laughs> Sin sinister. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Zelensky emoji and uh, and a ye emoji. Sounds good. Sounds good, Sin. Sin. Yeah, she's ignoring you. Alrighty, if you guys have no more questions, I will be going to get some food or eat some food and then I will be going to the laundry because um, I need to uh, finish mending what you mm -hmm, have done. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh my gosh, look at who came out. <laughs> okay, well, I, um, I will post some videos and some photos on Patreon, so you will see Beast. But, um, yeah. Keep in mind, this woman likes oat milk. I do. What's wrong with oat milk? What kind of food? Well, I made some pasta with, uh, so I have this, like, truffle truffle cheese powder that's very good. Yelenka tak buda. Ya pokazu, kole buda. Basically, yes, pasta is carbs. I'm okay with carbs. <laughs> but, uh... And Ross the Gremlin, yes, that's true. But basically, yes, I, I will be eating my pasta that I made yesterday that is really good. No, you are it's too early for you yet. Too early. Too early, baby. Okay. Gremlin arose, and <laughs> I will see you guys later. We, had a, we gotta go <laughs> to the laundromat, and I will see you tomorrow during the news brief that I will try to post earlier than I have been before. And I will set it as a premiere again so we can chat while it's happening, okay? See you guys tomorrow. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And thank you for, um, thank you for, uh, yeah, thank you for basically, you know, caring about Ukraine, watching me and stuff like that. Don't forget to sign up for my YouTube. That's the same as everywhere, every other social media of mine. So it's the same across the board. And, um, and, and, and. And, and yes, see you guys. And also, oh, tomorrow I'm setting up a fundraiser and it's going to be a very fun one. So I will let you know the details in the morning. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs>